Time for rock news on 101.1 WJRR, Orlando's rock station. Let's check in with Lynch and Taco and see which rockers are making the headlines for all the right and wrong reasons. 101.1 WJRR. We are Orlando's rock station. Uh, don't forget, rock the bank keyword out there right now. The first one of the day was pay, P-A-Y, pay. Uh, you got another 20, 25 minutes to enter that at WJRR.com for a chance to be paid $1,000 and rock the bank. It's that easy. Pay. Enter it at the website. Then leave the station on all day if you can. If your boss is cool like that, you can get those keywords at the start of each hour through 9 o'clock tonight. Play every hour. And if your boss isn't like really cool like that kind of on the edge, just say, hey, I'll grease your palm with $100 if you let me listen and I win 1000 all right, as we begin uh, music news, and I'm saying music news this morning, there is a uh, big uh, story that uh, greeted us literally as uh, we started our day. And it was bad news, sad news. Mm-hmm. Country music superstar Toby Keith has lost his battle with cancer. Um, he died last night. His family released the information early, early, early this morning. 62 years old. Stomach crazy. cancer. Yeah, crazy. We all knew that he was battling with the cancer, but... uh Stinks to see somebody go like that. Uh, 10 o'clock this morning, Mel will uh, pop in and have a major WJRR concert announcement to share with you. It's big. I'm excited about this, man. It's big. Mm -hmm. 10 o'clock, so about 40 minutes from now. More from Mel. That's all we can say at this point. Uh, so at the Grammys the other night, I know all all the chatter was Taylor Swift related, but there's some other cool things that happened, including Tracy Chapman coming out and performing her song Fast Car with Luke Combs. That was huge. Which, at this point, the original version of that song, Fast Car, is now almost 36 years old. Following the performance, guess what? The sales on it? That song shot the original version, not Luke Combs, Mm -hmm. but the original version shot to number one on the digital downloads charts. Did you get it? That is incredible. Did you get to watch any of that? I I did not watch live. I saw the highlights afterwards. Did you see how good Tracy Chapman looks? She's fantastic. She is an incredible artist. Yeah, I know. She's an incredible artist, but did you see how good she looked? I was like, wow, she aged well. Even my wife said it. She's like, oh. Good for her. I know. Good for her. Um, We may see a similar situation happen following the Super Bowl. One of the Super Bowl ads is a two-minute commercial that was bought by Paramount Plus, the streaming service, to uh, tout its offerings. It's going to be jam-packed with a bunch of Paramount Plus uh, actors that you see in the various shows, including Sir Patrick Stewart. Drew Barrymore is in the spot. Uh, And then out of nowhere, here comes Tua from the Dolphins. He's also in the spot. And it's a pretty cool commercial. If you want a little sneak peek of it, I put it on the JR Facebook page and the Lynch and Taco blog at WJR.com. The music accompaniment, which also features two members of the band, Creed, is (laughs) the song Higher. Let's see what happens with that song after it airs during the Super Bowl. Yeah. I will venture to guess it's going to spike pretty high. It's a, it's a hit. It's a great song. Commercial's pretty cool, too, if you want to take a look at that. Again, on the JR Facebook page. I'll give her a look. Not a big Drew Barrymore fan anymore, but I'll still give it a look. Uh, one of the uh, satellite events uh, associated with the Grammys was Aerosmith's Steven Tyler. He holds a, uh, a benefit... Uh, this will be the fifth year he's had the Jam for Janie Grammys viewing party. He had that on Sunday at the Hollywood Palladium. Um, what's notable here is Tyler has finally made comments about his recent vocal cord injury that forced the postponement of Aerosmith's Peace Out Farewell Tour. He says that he's uh, his throat's been better, but it's on the mend. And then his daughter went on to elaborate, he shouldn't even be talking right now. So, I, how long this tour is still going to be on hold or postponed? We shall see. I, before yeah. it becomes maybe something else. Don't say those words. Tyler's 75 years old. I know. His vocal style. I know. I know. All right. Um, 
those of you who were saddened when Slayer decided to retire, you can take solace in Kerry King's new band, which uh, Kerry King's band will play at Welcome to Rockville in May. And I suspect after um, some ears are put on the first song that they released, little sampling from the uh, King's debut solo album called From Hell I Rise, which comes out in May. The first single is absolutely incredible. It's not mainstream at all. You would have to be a Slayer fan to really, really appreciate this. Yeah. And you will. Uh, first photograph of the band, including the Carrie King, Paul Bostoff the, uh, from Slayer, Kyle Sanders from Hell Yeah, Phil DeMell, formerly of Machine Head and Violence, and on vocals, Death Angels, Marth, uh, Mark Asageda, who is incredible. The song is just, it, it's going to blow your doors off if you want to check it out. Um, it is available right there on uh, YouTube. Take take a look and a listen to Carrie King's new solo band. And if you're any, even a bit part of a Slayer fan, you're going to be, oh yeah, here we go. Just the members that you just named. Wow. It is. Those are heavy hitters. It is absolutely incredible. I was rocking out to it at my desk earlier, and uh, someone walked by and goes, what the hell is that? <laughs> I Single, by the way, is called Idle Hands. Idle Hands. Uh, the original contract for Led Zeppelin recently surfaced, and uh, it's interesting. It's the 1968 contract between Atlantic Records and uh, Zeppelin. Uh, interesting in, in that there's a couple clauses in there that got signed off on. Uh, one stated that Jimmy Page was the undisputed leader of Zeppelin. Clause number two, Jimmy Page had sole discretion and could fire any member of the band and replace them. Are you if serious? If he wanted to. Guess who? The only ones who signed the contract were Jimmy, Jimmy and, and the president of Atlantic Records. The other guys in the band were like, I'm not signing. Uh huh. And you just really pissed off all your teammates. I'm not signing that. Uh, and finally, there's this I don't know what's going on with David Lee Roth, but he continues to kind of rib Wolfgang Van Halen during uh, Dave's. Uh, podcast first he was pissed off that wolfgang uh had some of dave's guests removed from the side of the stage during van halen's last tour now he's all over wolf for his wanting to see the only van halen album that he's on uh 2012 is a different kind of truth return to streaming services uh, dave's like look man that album was dead on arrival kicked to the curb it, it was a face plant and uh, it's not on streaming services because me and Alex don't want to pay to have that on there and just give it up, dude. He's basically saying... Don't get involved. He was involved. He just... Yeah. I, I, it's not necessary. It's not necessary for Dave to be, I think. Pointing anger or ribbing him or whatever you want to call it. At Wolf again. It's just, I don't, it doesn't make any sense. Do you have any questions and reminder on that uh, 10 o'clock concert announcement with Mel? Big concert announcement. Yeah. You'll like this. It's going to be cool. It's going to be very cool. There's your rock news. One one W J R R.